Hi and welcome to SCW here on YouTube.com. Thank you for choosing the channel and choosing the video. Please subscribe right now. Leave any comments in the comment section. Please like and share the video as well. AEW Full Gear is this Saturday evening. So I thought let's get the predictions out for you. Let's go through. It's a stacked card and there are some matches I'm looking forward to more than others. But um, we'll go through that as we go through the video. And of course I'll give my predictions as well. I look forward to seeing your predictions in the comments below. So please leave a comment on this video. Let me know who you think is going to be walking away from AEW full gear as a winner. I'd like to know your feelings in the comments below. But without further ado, let's get straight into it and I'm going to go straight to the top of the card and work my way down because I tell you what, I'm really much looking forward to the I Quit match, the AEW World Championship. John Moxley, I'm not going to do it Justin Roberts style this time, uh, going to be taking on none other than Eddie Kingston. Now these two go way back, apparently friends since 2009. Uh, of course, um, John Moxley left Eddie Kingston behind to go to the world of sports entertainers. That's where this feud has kind of begun really and to think Eddie Kingston uh, I mean has been in the indie scene for so long he wasn't even part of AEW this time a couple of months ago he came in knocked out of the park against Cody in a TNT Open Championship match had a killer promo had a great match got himself signed and in a quick space of time he's got himself into the main event of a pay-per-view what a breakout year Eddie Kingston is having and that is saying something for someone who's been around for so so long but so happy for Eddie Kingston to be in this spot he's coming he's got himself his own little group he's got his best friend Penta by his side of course his brother Phoenix uh, and as well as that we've got Butcher and the Blade and now the Bunny all a part of this as well so it'll be interesting to see if they make an appearance during this I Quit match to help Kingston out as well um, but looking at it I do think that um, this is great I mean Eddie Kingston as well he said that he never lost the Battle Royal he then got his opportunity Opportunity, of course, uh, to take on John Moxley at the time, uh, which was filling in for a main event that uh, couldn't happen at the time due to COVID. And uh, Eddie Kingston passed out and didn't tap out. He didn't quit. So that's led to building up perfectly towards this match for full gear because this time someone has to quit. Uh, John Moxley doesn't seem the quitting type. Eddie Kingston, you know he's not a quitter as well from what he's had to put himself through to get to this position. And it's been so perfect as well because even when Eddie Kingston used John Moxley's finisher the other week, he actually was <laughs> saying, sorry Moxley. He was almost in a trance. It's almost as if he was choking out John Moxley himself. So for me, this has been built so, so well. They have a face-to-face -face coming up on Dynamite this week as well, which should also be epic. But to give a prediction going into the match, I have to go with the champion to retain. John Moxley has been champion for so long in AEW. I think since Revolution in February, we're going back as far as, and Moxley has been a dominant champion. He finds ways to beat people each and every time. Just when an obstacle seems too big to overcome, he finds a way to overcome it. Let's not forget, Moxley defeated Jericho. He's beaten the likes of Brian Cage, Lance Archer, Brody Lee, all through here, MGF as well, to get to this point. He's beat some you know, top challengers along the way. And Eddie Kingston, I think, is going to be the next one that will fall uh, in this. And I think that it will lead, hopefully, to what will be my next uh, predicted match for you now, which is going to be the number one contenders championship tournament finals match. That's right. Uh, Kenny Omega against Hangman Adam Page. Uh, that will be, of course, the next challenger for Moxie after this, should Moxie win that. And, of course, Omega has history with John Moxie previously. Uh, Hangman Adam Page was in the, of course, a finals to beat the first ever uh, AEW World Champion back in the day. Of course, he's losing out to Chris Jericho um, way back. Uh, we're going now when, when we talk about that. But uh, these two now in the tournament final have arguably gone through the best storyline of the entire of 2020, in my opinion. Of course, these were two single stars as a tag team going for the tag team ranks, you know, holding those belts for nine or so months, losing them all out where it just seemed a little bit dissension was starting to creep in. Kenny Omega has kind of been that person as well that said, look, i done the tag team division. I was there for a good time, not a long time. Hangman Page still happy to keep that tag team going. And it almost felt a little bit that uh, Omega was watching uh, Hangman go through these singles matches to say, I'll pick my spot when I'm going to come back in. Hangman Adam Page, when watching on what Kenny Omega was doing, was almost lo watching like an ex moving on. You know, of course, you know, the tag team is what he had, but he's moved on for something great. He's gone for the singles division, gone for that AEW championship. And it looked like the Hangman Page almost going for that sympathy vote, you know, feeling like he misses what he had before. But since they've gone through this tournament, they're both now going to meet in the finals. Of course, both have been successful. 
along the way, of course, in the semi-final, Hangman defeating Wardlow, and of course, Omega beating Penta in the semi-final, which was an epic match. What is interesting as well about this, and we're not going through the whole history here of these two, but what's been interesting as well is that Kenny Omega has finally brought the cleaner back, and of course, Kenny Omega been a squeaky, almost clean babyface throughout his AEW run so far. He's brought back that gimmick from Japan that works so well, but he's evolved it. Kenny Omega has just been so charismatic he's oozed charisma since coming back with you know the ladies coming out was sweeping the stage we've seen omega you know when he was against penta with with the you know the triple a championship that he was wearing around his waist catching penta's glove as well it just for me looking at it Kenny Omega has really come back into his groove. It just feels like this is the Kenny Omega that is going to go towards the top of the card and become the champion and the face of the company, building towards that new star. Hangman Adam Page, he is a star. He's been so charismatic in his own right with his, you know, cowboy, you know, S word and going all through the year just as the tag team champion, but finding his ways of always getting over with his little gimmicks, of course, with the drinking as well. Hangman's time is going to come and I think Hangman will eventually become AEW world champion dethroning Kenny Omega but I think we have got the brand new AEW world champion to come in the next coming weeks or couple of months I think Omega wins this tournament I think he probably will find a way probably to cheat to do it as well I think that will just solidify that heel turn will break Hangman's heart in the process as well of getting an opportunity to go for the AEW world championship and I think it leads to Moxie versus Omega too but this time Omega will go in as the dirty heel and Moxie arguably the tweener but arguably more on the babyface side so I think that is your future uh, when we look when it comes to the AEW World Championship scene and I think it's looking very healthy and very bright for AEW going forward and I'm really looking forward to seeing this match with Omega and Paige I think that uh, these two have the potential to steal the show uh, one other few that I'm really loving on the build, and I didn't know I needed it until I started seeing it on TV, was Chris Jericho and MJF. Those two have been absolute electric together on TV. The personalities clashing have just been superb, you know, of the each calling each other a loser and then being whiny and finding ways out of it. And that I didn't mean to do that. I was calling the limo driver the loser. You know, it just was very good in the way this has been put together. MJF has finally admitted he wants to join, he wants to be a part of the inner circle. Chris Jericho, he sees there is potential, a protege in MJF, and he's been strongly considering the idea, despite the rest of the inner circle absolutely seemingly against the idea of MJF coming in, particularly Ortiz and Sammy Guevara. And Sammy Guevara definitely has the reasoning to not want MJF in there because jackets were bought as presents for the inner circle, and Sammy Guevara didn't get one for weeks, and when he did, it was at least about five or six sizes too big. Um, I, I feel that there definitely is some sort of play here with MJF showing that uh, Sammy, he always feels he should be in Sammy's position as the protege and not Sammy in the group. But there's so many different twists and turns that this can go. And one twist I definitely didn't see coming was La Dina de Janeiro. I must admit that I, I, I love my music. If there's one thing I'm passionate about alongside of professional wrestling, it is music. The fact that these two were doing uh, you know, a fun rendition of Me and My Shadow, which I think is a great song, by the way. Um, I just found it electric. I found it entertaining. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a different side of MJF's character that we haven't seen to this point. Jericho, we're used to seeing him do these entertaining skits through the years. Uh, and I just think that this is going to be something we're going to look back in 10, 15 years. I think that was great fun. And it was a great moment. I think it's uh, certainly be something that we'll look back with, uh, with definitely positivity in the future of AEW for years to come. But um, looking at things, though, of course, they had the town hall meeting as well. Uh, should MJF join the inner circle? And he said, well, look, I'm the perfect guy to be in the, in the circle. But the problem is, I'm not being known as a team player. Perhaps I could learn to become a team player in the inner circle. And I thought that was a very key note there of like, they're not planning on turning on each other. How can we be so sure of that? Um, and and Jeff says he wants to be the team player. He's not going to turn on the inner circle. But he has told Chris Jericho, when Jericho laid the terms out, Jericho said, look, you can be part of the inner circle, but you've got to beat me at full gear. So here comes the thing with MJF's response. I will, I'll do anything to be part of the inner circle, anything. Is that going to be at the expense 
of Chris Jericho. There's lots of different ways this can twist and this can turn. Will MJF join the inner circle and then cause it to disband from within? He causes problems where everyone is falling out. Some people are on MJF's side and some people are on Jericho's side. Will he find a way of getting Sammy Guevara out of the group so Guevara can be the big baby face, you know, going against the inner circle with MJF as the heel amongst this heel faction? Or will it lead to Chris Jericho being chucked out of the group? MJF was the lead all along and the fact that uh, Chris, Chris, Chris Jericho is no longer the AEW World Champion, he's almost been losing matches at pay-per-views rather than winning them as of late, maybe the inner circle will look and say, well look, MGF could be the guy. And what about Wardlow? Will Wardlow be a part of this as well? It feels like he would be a part of this group going forward also. So it's very interesting to see how this will play and this is what makes it so exciting for me because I don't know how this is going to go. The one thing I'm sure of is that MGF picks up the victory in this and he's going to be joining the inner circle. The question is, is that what is going to be the aftermath of this? And that's the part for me that's really exciting about the storyline. Sometimes matches can be predictable, but if the story is amazing, it can be just as gripping. And for me, this is just as gripping. I'm really excited to see how this is going to play out, not just at full gear, but how it goes thereafter. And I think, as I said, there's many different ways it can go. Uh, let's see which way it will go when it comes to full gear. But for a prediction, I say MGF is joining the inner circle. And just if I have to make a prediction of all the outcomes of what that could lead to, I will say it will be at the expense of Chris Jericho. I think Chris Jericho is getting turned on and I think he is going to be kicked out of the inner circle. Let's look then at the TNT Championship. We've got Cody defending against Darby Allen. Now, this is where I start being slightly lackluster when we look at this towards the pay-per-view because uh, Cody's been focused mainly on matches with Orange Cassidy. Darby Allen has been sitting very emo-like in his own little area, part of the Daily's place, staring and watching the matches. Now, what I really liked about the matches with Orange Cassidy were there were always mirror images of Cassidy or uh, Darby Allen, sorry, I should say, in his matches with Cody up to now. Of course, the first match with Orange Cassidy was a draw, just like Darby Allen's was. And then, of course, the second match, Cody just about overcome Orange Cassidy, just like Darby Allen. So I like the mirror image of how this has been put together. I just don't think it's been explained like that on storytelling to the viewer from the commentary. And I think that's where this has lacked a little bit. And I want to see those mirror images play into this pay-per-view match because Darby Allen, this is arguably the biggest match of his career. And this could be the moment he could become not just the TNT champion, but finally that moment he's been trying to do since, well, AEW begun, which is at least, you know, we're talking nearly 18 months ago here where, where Darby Allen got that first draw with Cody. Can he finally get that victory? Um, I'm going to say that Cody retains here. Um, my reasoning for it is because if this remains one on one, we've got Arn Anderson in the corner of Cody. Cody has been slightly heelish, but I do feel that he'll find a way to pick up the victory. The question will be, and I'll bring this up now rather than towards the end of the video because I think it could be interesting here, is there has been rumours that Sting could be coming to AEW and could be debuting here at full gear. They are teasing someone is going to come in. And of course, if Sting was a part and on TNT on Dynamite for the first time in nearly 20 years, that would be a massive deal. Not to mention that other company. But when they bring in Goldberg, they bring him in because they believe it's going to pop a rating. Sting is an iconic wrestling name, and it is a smart strategy to bring Sting in, even if it's a short term, if it's a managerial role, if it's to have a match with the likes against Cody, a, a, arguably what would seen as would be a dream match in the AEW community, I'm pretty sure. And of course, I mean, Sting would be a great mentor to Darby Allen. Would he come in and make that impact? It would be interesting to see. Would he make the same for Darby Allen? It would be interesting to know what will happen. I'm going to stick and say Cody will win this match. Will Sting debut? There's no smoke without fire. And let me tell you, there's been a lot of rumours going around that Sting will be joining AEW. So I'm going to stick my neck out and say, yes, Sting will be at full gear. And I think if he's going to be anywhere, it's going to be in and around this match with the TNT Championship. I will just quickly touch on a little bit more, though, about this debut, because I want to see someone come in in the women's division. That's where, if you said to me, Steve, you can have one person to come in to improve one division 
in AEW. I think the women's division is where it's crying for an extra, you know, a name or two. Someone of a Tessa Blanchard, a Kelly Klein, someone out there just to boost the division a bit. Because you look at it and say that um, they've got some talented women in AEW. They've been unlucky with the likes of Riho um, being unable to be there during this pandemic. Britt Baker was sadly injured for a long time. Kylie Ray, but of course now no longer professional wrestler, but wanted to leave AEW. And I think that they were really going to push her. Cody was high on Kylie Ray at the time, but she ended up in Impact Wrestling. So it's just felt that um, AEW have not had the opportunities to push the women's division the way they've wanted to. Now, patience is everything. And I do think that AEW have built some great, talent and stars and as we go into this match I mean Akara Shida is the current AEW Women's World Champion and she's been a top babyface champion the problem is that she's just not been on TV much as of late and I think AEW clearly want to build some new women to challenge her but they need to keep the champion on TV as well because I mean otherwise she becomes a bit of an afterthought as well. She had such a great time during when they were at QT Marshall's gym. She was wrestling every single week, built such momentum, and it felt right at that point when at Double or Nothing, she won the championship from Nyla Rose. Since then, Nyla Rose, I don't feel I've seen much of her on TV. And we're going back there. That's, I mean, Double or Nothing was in May. Um, that, for me, feels that um, this match has just been sprung upon us. You know, we had the NWA Women's Champion, Thunder Rosa, around for a while. And, of course, then it felt like we were building towards Sheena Rosa 2. That never took place. Rosa hasn't been around for quite a while now. And, of course, Rosa now has dropped uh, that uh, NWA Women's Championship to Serena Deeb, of course, who was part of the AEW roster. But, uh, of course, that belt was showcased when the AEW Women's Championship hasn't really been. So, um, for me, I just feel that um, it's been a bit hit and miss as of late. And, of course, it takes time to regroup. And I think that AEW will regroup when it comes to the women's division. I do expect to see the likes of Britt Baker leading this division because I think she is the star here. She's so fantastic in her role as a role model gimmick. I, I absolutely love it. But looking at this, this match feels a bit of an afterthought that we've got here at Full Gear, which is disappointing because Sheeda and Rose both very talented. Uh, I do expect Sheeda to retain the championship. I won't spend too much talking about the match as there's not been so much in the build. It's more of the history of what's gone on with Double or Nothing and Nyla Rose just waiting her time to get her opportunity again. It's great she's got an opportunity again. I think it's the best match right now that they can put on because Britt Baker hasn't been necessarily winning every single match. It's nice to see her built into the role. Perhaps Revolution time, that would be the perfect match then to have Sheena and Britt Baker. But this moment, it feels that Sheena should retain and uh, I think this probably is the best match they can put on right now. So um, let's see what happens. But as I say, I believe Sheena will walk away still AEW Women's Champion. Let's talk about the Tag Team Championships. And oh boy, um, this is a dream match. Let's start with this. FTR against the De Young Bucks. There is no substitute for that. And this build, when they first came in with these two teams up to all out, was absolutely superb. And I was excited to see it. And I felt from that point, we were definitely going to get... Uh, that match here at Full Gear. And we are getting that match here at Full Gear, but it feels like the Young Bucks have gone almost like a bit of a heel turn, a rebellious turn, you know, super kicking officials and, you know, reporters backstage. And there's not really been as much focus on the Young Bucks against FTR until very recently. And of course, the Bucks won what was a predictable four way to get into this slot, but, um, FTR have kind of, you know, they took out one of the legs of, I believe it was Matt Jackson, they took the leg out of uh, after the match with the help of Tully Blanchard. Um, and that's kind of helped put a little bit of steam here, but this should be just talked about as the dream match. And I think that discussion has kind of disappeared a little bit in recent weeks, which has made me feel a bit flatter going into this. But I do know when it comes to showtime, this match is going to deliver. I, you know, rest assured, this could be match of the year candidate with these two teams right here, right now, because they're not going to, you know, have a lackluster match when it comes to it. These two are two of the best tag teams in the world, and I expect them to showcase it here at Full Gear. But there is one part of me that is very disappointed because the Young Bucks have done the Full Gear stipulation because Cody did it last year, and the Bucks are doing it this year. And it, for me... I wouldn't say it spoiled the idea of the match, but for me, it's made it slightly more predictable as a result. The Bucks, if they lose this, will no longer go for the AEW Tag Team Championships, which for me, 
I understood it with Cody, and I always felt that even though he lost that match last year at Full Gear, that maybe one day he'll get the opportunity to become the world champion and fans will rejoice, and rather than thinking, well, you know, he's put the championship on himself and, you know, it'd just be that forcing himself down everyone's throats. If he had the opportunity to win it in, say, a year or two's time from now where he gets the opportunity again and then wins it, I feel you'd get that big major pop and that big moment. But um, the fact that we're doing it with the Young Bucks as well, and I feel that they're going to lose this match because of this. Um, for me, I want to see the Bucks as the tag team champions at some stage. The fact that they'll take that so it can never happen just feels a bit, well, you know, some of the biggest stars of your company can't hold those championships. And of course, we're going to build new stars. There's no argument in that. But the Bucks don't need to do this. I feel that maybe they could win the belts here or somewhere else down the line. Uh, perhaps there will be a quick title change here. But um, I just kind of thought to myself that um, I feel FTR are going to win this match. If, you know, the, the, I've only had the belts since all out. It would feel a bit of a quick title change if there were to. Tag Team Wrestling seems so important to AEW. And of course, for the Young Bucks, you know, it's helped build new stars as well and put other teams over. The Bucks need to be in and around the championship picture. They're not just a name value that people can beat and then go to the championship picture later. I want to see the Bucks in and around and in that mix. So for me, I am disappointed, but I do know this match is going to be epic. Uh, and as a prediction, as I say, I'm going to go for FTR to retain those championships. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what will happen. Hopefully it will uh, certainly be an exciting match when it comes around. And who knows, maybe I'll be surprised when the Young Bucks actually pull off and... Uh, this stipulation worked last year, but um, they've used it this year, but actually to make the title change. Uh, well, next, we've got the Elite Deletion match now with uh, Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara. Uh, please, nobody get hurt after all out. It was a bit of a nervous moment, wasn't it? But um, the Elite Deletion, I'm hoping is some form of cinematic match that we'll have with these two, uh, perhaps at the Hardy compound. It should be fun with these two. Guevara is fantastic in these sort of moments where he you know, is the heel uh, and having to run away or be chased by things. Of course, Hardy, when he was in the golf buggy area this year, these two have had some fun moments. And uh, one thing's for sure, this feud needs to end here. Um, for me, I want Sammy Guevara to win because of the fact that I do believe he's the future star. I think it's good to put that talent over. But uh, of course, an elite deletion match makes me feel it more favours Harley to pick up the victory. Of course, Harley did pick up the victory at the last pay-per-view all out. Uh, questionable whether that match should have continued at the time to have that finish. Um, but um, I, I do want Sammy Guevara to pick up the victory, but I could see Hardy doing it again. So heart says Guevara, my head says Hardy. Last but not least, let's go for the buy-in match. We've got Orange Cassidy against John Silver, of course, number four in the Dark Order. Interesting, Brody Lee currently not on the card as of uh, she recording this. Of course, that can change with one final Dynamite this evening. I do think there'll be one match added, but I'll mention that at the end of this match. Orange Cassidy, it's a shame that uh, he is not on the card, actually, for, for this full gear. Of course, he beat Chris Jericho on the last pay-per-view, so it would have been good to see him on the main show. Uh, but, of course, you can't put everybody on. And one thing I like about the card, what we've seen so far with Full gear. It doesn't feel as long as as many matches as what we got for All Out. I felt All Out was too long of a show, so maybe this is for the best thing. And you have to rotate. And Orange Cassidy in this spot, and what a great spot for John Silver. I mean, John Silver has actually done some phenomenal work, and it's not gone unnoticed to get this position on the buy-in. When you look at such talents as well, Brian Cage, Ricky Starks, Lance Archer. None of them are booked on this show. Um, you know, Will Hobbs as well. And, and Silva's got himself in the buying match. So kudos to him for doing so. But um, he's not going to win here for me. I mean, that's one thing I would say for sure. Orange Cassidy will be going over here because Cassidy, he's got some momentum. It feels like he's in that mid-card area now. He's ready for the TNT Championship when they're ready to put the belt on him. It feels he's been really elevated up the card during uh, 2020. So I expect him to continue with that momentum. I just say, I've not mentioned Starks and uh, Brian Cage. Of course, Starks is unhappy with the idea that he could be, uh, should have been in the match instead against Cody, but Darby Allen was given that chance instead. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Starks and Cage made an appearance here. Maybe that would be the cause of what could make Sting come in and actually make his AEW debut. So um, there are that is a potential cameo thing that could happen. So um, kind of going back to a match there, but as it's sprung into mind, I thought I'd just make that little add-on as well while it came to my head. Um, if I had to make a prediction for one more match, I do think we could get best friends against Miro and Kip Sabian. I just think that that one could happen. It's not been announced. If it does happen, I expect Miro and Kip Sabian to pick up the victory. Uh, of course, it's all a feud over you know the, the broken arcade game that happened when best friends had their tag team championship 
Championship match. Uh, I just feel Miro, he's on a push. He's not losing matches, so I'd expect Miro to continue the momentum. Of course, the win losses do matter in AEW, so I'd expect for that reason that Miro would continue that momentum. Of course, Best Friends had a lot of wins this year, but it wouldn't hurt them if they had a loss here. But that's if that match was to be added to this show. If there is one more match added or two more matches or any more from Dynamite, then do check out This Week in Wrestling, which is my weekly podcast that I have on there on the channel. And I'll add those matches and give predictions to it on the channel. So make sure to keep an eye out for This Week in Wrestling this week, where I may just have one or two more AEW announcements and will give the AEW Dynamite review as well. Uh, but that's all from this particular video anyway. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your predictions in the comments below. I look forward to interacting with you. Please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and do share with a friend. Friend. Of course, word of mouth goes a long way in to help the channel grow further. Near 650 subscribers would love to hit that milestone. And uh, I just want to say, please enjoy AEW Full Gear. I hope that uh, it's a great pay-per-view. Hope that uh, we get a chance to talk about it after the show. I'll be back for a review. And uh, hopefully we'll all be saying great things of what a stellar pay-per-view this is. On paper, this looks like a fantastic card. The build in places in a couple of matches has been lackluster with an odd weird stipulation or two, but I do think this is going to be a great show. I think we're going to come out the other end of this and we're going to say this is like a 4.5 star out of 5 you know, performance here from the AEW crew. I really, really do. But that's all for me anyway. Thank you for watching. If you're an Impact Wrestling fan, check out the Turning Point Preview predictions available on the channel for you now. And of course, more videos will be popping up this week as well as, say, This Week in Wrestling, as well as the Q&A as well will be coming up on Sunday, as well as the AEW review for Full Gear. But have yourselves a great day. I'll see yourselves next time. Take care. You've been watching SCW here on YouTube.